Welcome to my Minecraft mod notebook. This will be industrial optimization part one of many. Uh, we're going to be cover covering what crushes servers. Uh, today is the 3rd of December 2013. So first things first, let's look at my seven step guide to crush the server. So you're going to want to set up the following. Uh, you're going to need a very large solar uh, solar generation setup. Uh, you're going to need to set up an equal amount of wind power and hydropower. Uh, after which, uh, you're going to want to begin querying for resources and setting up a large logistics pipe system to autocraft everything. Unfortunately, step six and seven were lost due to server issues. I do believe the server at that point was kind of permanently crashed. Oops. So, what went wrong? Uh, let's look at the top ways to slow a server. Uh, this is more of the temporary... Uh, I'm going to, for the sake of simplicity, call them um, small lag spikes or temporary uh, block breaking issues. Uh, the first is going to be the world, uh, simply the number of players. Uh, players teleporting around especially very rapidly or in large numbers is going to cause uh, some sort of server issues. Uh, for smaller servers, if you have, uh, if you're trying to run a lot of players on a uh, lower power server machine, uh, having a lot of players in different locations may be a small source of uh, server issues. Uh, also, generating new chunks. Uh, that is pretty hard on servers. Uh, I believe a common misconception is that a very large or very de uh, developed vanilla map uh, supposedly causes uh, server issues. I don't believe that's the case, unless I can actually see someone who can come forward with some code saying, here's, here's why this would happen. Uh, it's, simply a matter of, it's simply a matter of why would it cause issues. You simply have a very large file saved on your computer. So, uh, now that we've looked at slowing the server, let's actually go to crushing the server. Uh, the quick fix items, uh, number of entities, uh, and entities are items on the ground. Uh, you simply need more than about a thousand, at which point the server is going to start going down. I have done this personally in 125 before everything moved to a multiplayer uh, setting. I believe I could have. Uh, up to about 5,000 uh, blocks on the ground and my game would be moving at a whopping 1 to 2 FPS. Uh, large mob farms or large amounts of mobs, uh, again 50 should do. Uh, that's probably going to start to so, uh, show server issues. Uh, for tech builds especially, uh, things in pipes, again uh, over about a thousand you're, st you're going to start noticing. I might have accidentally put more than 5,000 items in a pipe system one time. Uh, said server that I was currently on was also running very slowly for some odd reason until I remedied that. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, pathfinding. It doesn't necessarily what uh, necessarily matter what sort of pathfinding, uh, be it mob pathfinding uh, or friendly entity pathfinding, it's all pathfinding. Uh, searching for items on the ground also can be uh, a bit of an issue, especially if you have a very large number of things searching or a very large number of things on the ground. Uh, extra points for having both. Uh, this does make the Thomcraft Golems a point of concern. Uh, especially if you have more than, well, two or three isn't going to be the end of the world. Two or three hundred is probably not the best idea. And I believe finally we have uh, ticking tile entities, uh, TTEs, and the various nets that are implemented in uh, the mods. Uh, these nets don't really matter what they are. Uh, power nets are effectively the same as fluid pipes, uh, same as item pipes, and so on. Um, 
nets are somewhat uh, worse as they are both a ticking tile entity and a uh, pathfinding route that needs to be calculated. So when it comes to server lag, uh, what is it exactly? Uh, it boils down to one of three things. Uh, the CPU load, the RAM load, and the network load. So network load is players logging in, uh, the server needs to send them the information of, hey, where am I, and what's around me. Uh, player teleports, again, uh, the same thing. You've got to send the player a lot of new information at once. It just bogs down the network. Uh, players in minecarts, and I believe to some extent horses, uh, minecart systems can be very, very fast, and you are suddenly sending a player, a or potentially several players, a lot of information at a very rapid rate uh, so that they can travel the minecart. Um, it all boils down to sending players new map information, and things just get bogged down. Uh, the RAM load is the amount of the world that's loaded. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean just players. You can have a single person online and 5,000 chunk loaders. Your servers can be screaming at you. Uh, large entity counts. Uh, this mostly is uh, items. Uh, be it a misconfigured farm that's spewing forth items. Uh, quarries can also do this. And my personal favorite was the Buildcraft Filla Circa Minecraft 125. Uh, the reverse quarry system uh, that could easily get a couple thousand items on the ground in about 30 seconds. So uh, CPU load is your ticking tile entities, your assorted nets, and anything that needs calculations. So the swarm of pass, uh, swarm of mining turtles that's passing by right now, it's probably causing a bunch of CPU load. So uh, once we kind of have an idea of what the loads are. Uh, let's figure out who gets what type of lags, or what type of loads. Uh, your vanilla servers are going to mostly be network, uh, just due to not really a whole lot else going on. So, uh, building really cool, really big buildings. Uh, I've seen some great cathedrals, uh, great cities that stretch for kilometers on end. Those aren't really going to be killing your server. It's mostly going to be network, and really only then if you've got people coming in and out of the server. Uh, you might have some CPU issues if you try to build a, a CPU out of redstone. Uh, that's going to cause some issues. Uh, for tech mods, it's mostly going to be CPU and RAM. Uh, this is because Minecraft has little to no threading support. So you might have a quad or hex core processor, but that doesn't matter at all. It's all about the processor speed. So, uh, ticking tile entities and nets, uh, for just the sake of clarity, uh, the ticking tile entity is a block that has to do anything. Uh, if it has to do something, it's a ticking tile entity. Uh, furnaces, uh, the smelt items, it's doing something, it's got to keep track of it. And it's got to update every tick, or every some number of ticks. Uh, generators, same concept. Material processors, again, same concept. Uh, the nets, if you're moving a block, you've got to have a path that the block moves through. It's something that has to be calculated. Uh, more often than not, said, uh, said piping system also has a visual component, or has the uh, blocks actually able to be seen tran uh, transiting. Uh, that's extra load. So the best part, uh, the best place to start reducing your server crushing uh, builds is to start by reducing or removing the ticking tile entities and various nets. Uh, Multi-block structures and power generation are probably going to be the easiest spot to look at first, so in the next part we're going to be covering those. So until then, think big.